as pundits go and culture often can nail it. Talking about the Kavanaugh crisis, she breaks it down, beginning with a hammer on the right. I am giving everybody every benefit of every doubt. I'm not attacking Ford, who, again, as I said last night, I've heard is a nice person. But this is a political tactic designed to prevent the president from putting his nominee on the court. Why are Republicans in the Congress playing along with this? Um, I think some of them, and this is, this is the only thing that I think makes it dangerous for Republicans, for Kavanaugh, and for the Republic, because there are certain Republicans in the Senate who so hate Trump. Um, right. They would put their egos above the good of the country. The hammer strikes again. Who's running America? I think y your point that um, if they get away with this, there's, then you have CNN running the country. It's not even just the Democrats running the country. It's the media running the country because this allegation could be made against anyone at any time. CNN takes a hit. Owned by Turner Broadcasting. A division of AT&T's Warner Media. Its key players are Jeff Zucker, president of CNN, Doug Shapiro, chief strategist of Turner, and its president, David Levy. Now, if that's not enough control in the hands of a chosen few, then when adding to the mix Wolf Blitzer, Jacob Tapper, and John Berman, one wonders if perhaps a particular bias is shading CNN news. Is there an angle to be gained when dissevering reality from spin? Why is every news venue spotlighting outrage hacks reaming old white Republican men for bullying Ford and blaming the victim? As long as you are a, a presumed white male Republican, whether it's the Duke Lacrosse case or, oh, that dastardly Haven Monahan um, in the Rolling Stone story about the frat boys gang raping the gal, the whole thing yep. turned out to be fake. There is no Haven Monahan. Um, or now a lot of the, the statements about Brett Ka Kavanaugh, like from Krugman, oh, he's smirking. Um, and a lot on Twitter and yep. elsewhere. Oh, he's a white male, is white privilege. If you fit the narrative, you are guilty and there is no coming back from that. If you're white, with traditional values, or a constitutionalist judge that won't budge when others try to fudge, then you fit the narrative and you'll be crucified for it. Look for witnesses, false witnesses. Just crucify the guy you hate. They did it to Jesus Christ, you know. And the all-powerful media invades your brains with a bias that's hard to shake. Trump could stop it by nationalizing the press then bid out network venues on short-term contracts to broadcasters having contrasting political and cultural views. That way, a diversification of discussion is secured. If not, we're stuck with a chosen few pushing their own interests, resorting to mind manipulation that molds opinions, feelings, and suspicions. Brett Kavanaugh and the White House are denying new allegations from a second woman against the Supreme Court nominee. These allegations are published in The New Yorker. Deborah Ramirez, a classmate of Kavanaugh's at Yale, says that Kavanaugh thrust his genitals in her face at a dorm party and caused her to touch it without her consent. Shades of fake news. At first off, she wasn't sure it was Kavanaugh because of significant gaps in her memories. But after six days with her Democrat lawyer, she decided, oh, it could only be him. <laughs> and by Berman joining Kavanaugh's denial with the White House. Brett Kavanaugh and the White House are denying new allegations from a second woman. It makes Kavanaugh's repudiation look like a political ruse. Tell me, why didn't Berman mention that Ramirez admitted she was stone drunk at the party? Look. According to the Constitution, the Senate is to advise and consent on Supreme Court nominees its concern to discern if the candidate has the intellect of qualifications and judicial experience to weigh crucial cases in the highest court of the land. It is not to decide whether dormitory forays and loosely strung accusations are pertinent to the process. And why, when all kinds of sexual mores are pushed these days, the press part of the push, 
is the same press in an uproar about teenage makeout parties some 36 years ago. I don't see any other way out of the current trap of media messaging other than Trump nationalizing the fake news industry. Traps are set for animals. It's time we human beings set our own traps and clasp the media's feet to the fire.